Did you know that batteries do not make electricity? That may be very interesting to you, but this is really good information to know when politicians are trying to force us to eliminate fossil fuels. Take a few minutes to listen to the facts. You most likely don't know them. Then try to figure out why are they forcing us into electric cars? Because I can't figure this out. What is a battery? I think Tesla said it best when they called it an energy storage system. That's important because batteries do not make energy. They store electricity produced elsewhere, primarily from coal, uranium, natural gas powered plants, or diesel fuel generator. So to say an EV or an electric vehicle is a zero emissions vehicle is not at all valid. Did you know that 40% of electricity generated in the US is from a coal fired plant? It follows that 40% of EVs on the road are coal powered. I'll tell you more about this in just a moment, but first I wanna remind you to subscribe and click that little bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. We give you more than car reviews and first looks at new vehicles, we give you car smarts because knowledge is power. Einstein's formula E equals MC squared tells us it takes the same amount of energy to move a 5,000 pound gasoline driven automobile a mile as it does an electric one. The only question again is what produces the power? To reiterate, it does not come from the battery. The battery is only the storage device, like a gas tank is in a car. This may sound like you are deep in the rabbit hole. Please listen to this to understand what we're facing with electric car batteries, then you can decide for yourself. There are two orders of batteries, rechargeable and single use. The most common single use batteries are double A's, triple A's, C's, D's, nine volts, and other specialty batteries. These dry cell batteries use zinc, manganese, lithium, silver oxide, zinc, and carbon to store electricity chemically, and all the batteries contain toxic heavy metals that are hazardous to the environment. Rechargeable batteries only differ in that their internal materials are different, usually lithium ion, nickel metal oxide, and nickel cadmium. The United States uses 3 billion of these two types of batteries per year, and most are not recycled. They end up in landfills. California is the only state which requires all batteries to be recycled. And if you throw your small used batteries in the trash, here is what happens to them. All batteries are self-discharging. That means even when they're not in use, they leak a tiny amount of energy. You have likely ruined something over your lifetime where a ruptured battery has caused corrosion inside. And when a battery runs down and can no longer power a toy or a remote control or a flashlight, most people say that battery is dead. Well, it's not. It continues to leak a small amount of electricity as with the chemicals inside, it runs out and pressure builds up and the battery's metal casing and eventually it cracks and the metals left inside then ooze out. That ooze has ruined a flashlight. It is toxic. And so that ooze will inevitably leak into every battery that's in a landfill and all batteries eventually rupture. It just takes rechargeable batteries longer to end up in that landfill. In addition to dry cell batteries, there's also wet cell ones. They're used in automobiles, boats, and motorcycles. The good thing about these types of batteries is that 90% of them are recycled, but that's not the half of it. For those of us excited about electric cars and the green revolution, I wanted to take a closer look at batteries, windmills, and solar panels. These three technologies share what the industry calls environmentally destructive embedded costs. Everything manufactured has two costs associated with it, embedded costs and operating costs. And I'll explain embedded costs so that you can understand why electric vehicles may not make sense. Here's an example of embedded costs. Canned corn is on sale. So you run to the store and corn is on sale on the shelf for $1.75 a can. The cost of that can of corn has embedded costs. The first cost is the diesel fuel for the farmer was used to plow the field, then till the ground, harvest the corn, and transport that food to a processor. Not only is the farmer's diesel fuel an embedded cost, so is the cost of the tractor, the combines, the trucks to transport it. In addition, the farmer might use a nitrogen fertilizer made from natural gas. 
Next is the energy costs of processing the corn, heating the building, transporting and the workers, and paying for the vast amounts of electricity used to run the plant. The steel can holding the corn is also an embedded cost, making the steel can requires mining tankonite, shipping it to the, on a boat, extracting the iron for the can, placing it in a coal-fired blast furnace, and adding carbon. Then it's back on a truck to take the corn to the grocery store, and finally, add in the cost of the gasoline of your vehicle to drive to the store. So you're probably saying, Lauren, how does this impact electric car batteries? Well, a typical EV battery weighs 1,000 pounds, about the size of a large piece of luggage or 2,000 cell phones. It contains 25 pounds of lithium, 60 pounds of nickel, 44 pounds of manganese, 30 pounds of cobalt, 200 pounds of copper, and 400 pounds of aluminum, steel, and plastic, and inside are over 6,000 individual lithium ion cells. It should concern you that all these toxic chemicals come from mining. To manufacture each electric auto vehicle battery, you must process 25,000 pounds of brine for the lithium, 30,000 pounds of ore for the cobalt, 5,000 pounds of ore for the nickel, and 25,000 pounds of ore for copper. All told, you dig up 500,000 pounds of Earth's crust for just one battery. 68% of the world's cobalt, a significant part of the battery, comes from the Congo. Their mines have no pollution controls, and unfortunately, they employ children who die from handling this toxic material. That's been covered by the BBC. We should note that the factor of human cost is not considered in the cost of an electric vehicle or its battery. That's a completely different subject, and you can start that subject down in the comments if you want. There may be a place for new technologies in the future, but you must look beyond the myth of zero emissions. Many have predicted EVs and windmills will be abandoned once their embedded environmental costs of making and replacing them have become apparent. Going green may sound like an ideal solution, and the surface it is, and can create followers with catchy buzz phrases. But when you look into the hidden and embedded costs realistically and with an open mind, you can see that going green is more destructive to the Earth's environment than meets the eye, for sure. If this segment had been titled The Embedded Costs of Going Green, you probably wouldn't have listened to this at all. There is so much more to discuss. Put that down in the comments below and let's start the conversation. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you have any questions or comments, I'll be happy to answer them. You can support me by buying me a cup of coffee. The link for that is down in the description, plus all the links for our website, social media, book and podcast. I'm Lauren Fix. Thank you so much for watching.